<laughs> Let's welcome in the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Knowlesy, how are you? <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good to have you. Now, were, were you around at all for the air show this weekend? I was not. Uh, now, my wife was there from opening and closing for both days, mm -hmm. helping out with a uh, for a nonprofit. So she she was there all, all weekend, and and I had other commitments this weekend that I, that I couldn't get out of, and you know, one of them was a a, a ten year celebration for the. Uh, concrete skateboard park out there off uh, Raleigh Street and those young individuals there have worked very hard over the last 10 years to be able to put together a makeshift skate park which is something that uh, you know I, I fully support here locally to to build a skate park somewhere here in, in the city of Martinsburg or in the county. I also understand you flunked Ship driving 101 by running the rocks. You know, you got to watch what you say before you come on the air, right? I, I bought a new boat, and, and that's correct. There's, I've had about a month and a half, and I've already had a chance to propel her once. And, but, you know, as, as shocking as it was for me, I, when I told people, they go, oh, hey, that's normal on river when you're on the river. So, so I don't feel so bad. But Does thanks for you, putting it you out. should. You should. <laughs> Did you break the blades off of the, the propeller? Is that? Uh, let's just say that uh, it, 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 the blades were like this, and then it turned out like yeah. this. Okay. Yeah. They you were, don't. You rarely do. You break, break the, them, but the they, call, but you bend them, and that's it that's was as bent bad very as bad. losing one. So. Yeah. It, wasn't there anybody on the boat to say bad idea, Captain? Bad idea. Like Bill had that well, kind we're of guy. that today. <laughs> well, <laughs> bad idea, Captain. Bad you know, idea. I, I had a I had a brother, but uh, he, you know. He was just as shocked as I was. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? You were on, what, on the river, you said? Uh, well, I hit two in, in Allegheny, mm -hmm. and I hit one up on the, the Potomac. All right, very good. Uh, but we have one author here. Your wife, of course, is an author too, Dana. Yes. Yeah, and uh, how, any feedback on how her book is done? Well, I know that she got her first, uh, what do you call that? Uh, royalty check. Royalty check. That's so, a good day. So that's a good day, and, and you know, I, I don't ask how much, and, and, you know, if she, if she wants to tell me, she'll tell me. But, uh, you know, Dana's got her hands into so many different things, mm -hmm. not only business-wise, but uh, she's involved in some things within the community and volunteers that, uh, you know, it's kind of hard for us to keep up with one another. And we don't try. I mean, we're, we're there to support one another. And, you know, by the time we get home, it's like 10 o'clock at night before we sit down and, and have that, uh, that half hour, an hour of discussion. And, and uh, you know, I really I admire her for for the work that she does and how hard she works. How's that uh, the shower invention doing? Like, she keeps getting cabinet? royalties on that, you know, and uh, she's, nice. she's over, I want to say, uh, like five, over a thousand uh, five-star reviews for it. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing with Amazon or not, but. Yeah. It, it, what, it doesn't what, suck. Yeah. It's what, good. Yeah, so she's, she, so she does very well with, with what she does, and she has those two th two things that she's working off of Amazon, and she also, she she went when she got into the inventions uh, stuff that uh, she was, there was an organization that helped her with like a, a ten step process, and she got to know the owner of that very very well, and and he was so impressed with her that he brought her on his team, and and now she she helps get other people to get their uh, products licensed uh, through the market, so she does very well with that. One of her early things was sleeves that she built, uh, she made. How did how was it? How did that, the, the, uh, that was uh, the the cuffs. The uh, cuffs. And she yeah, okay. she had bought she had uh, first designed that for uh, the money was going to go to uh, battered women, and um, I think that kind of I think she still has them, but it's kind of gone to the wayside a little bit. Uh, whether she's going to revive it or not, I I don't know. And so with her, it's a uh, I, I, it's like a squirrel. She sees something shiny, she goes after it. She gets a new idea, she goes <laughs> after it. So. It, it's, those are the people Squirrel, that solve squirrel. the world's problems, man. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you what. She, her mind is always, always going. You know, so, she, for the uninformed, what is the shower invention? It's called it's called the shower caddy. It's a mesh caddy that goes into your shower that hangs from your shower curtain that that takes away uh, when you open up your shower. It t there's no uh, clutter or anything because they're in packets or, or in pockets to, on the shower. So. It goes with the shower, so it's a oh, neat. yeah, it's a pretty pretty neat invention. Uh, you know, when I when I first when she first presented it to me, it was one of those things. Oh, that's that's nice, honey. That's nice, honey. But mm. but then uh, you know when I saw what she did with it and, and took it to market, I mean, uh, she was she was one step away from. Uh, I, I think Oprah had that next best idea. Uh -huh. She was one step away of, of getting that 
taken care of at that time. So she's worked very hard and, and very hard at everything that she puts her, her mind into, and she does very well with it. First question for you, Kevin, is a complaint. You're the mayor. No You're kidding. probably used to that. No <laughs> kidding. From John Phoenix. So my trash pickup went from 300 to 375. Now it's going up to 450 next July 1. Fifty percent increase in trash removal in two years. Any thoughts on that? Oh, well, you know, uh, nobody likes to have any kind of fees increased for anything. And and if you take a look at what our fees are for our uh, garbage fees here in the city, uh, you take that and compare that to any private uh, entity. Uh, the private entity is going to you're going to pay more. Uh, you know, we have grown here in the city and and the the department itself uh, needs to grow so uh, with that means that unfortunately more fees have to be added to it is there a separate fee for the garbage in the city or is that all wrapped in the, along with other things N that there there is a, a garbage fee yes garbage yeah, fee per se yeah, yeah. and how much is it you know what the uh, he could probably tell you better than i can at this point i don't yeah. have the exact yeah. number and i don't want to I don't want to say this. I want to say it's like three seventy five. Yeah, John year. said it went it went up to three seventy five, and then next year to four fifty. Yeah, and and that it, that covers cost. I mean, you know, we we the city of Martinsburg has again has grown. It's continuing to grow, and you know, you have your your your, your you have your your, your uh, road crews. You have your uh, garbage crews that that are right now are, are are doing double duty, and and we're unable to. It, we, we we stay up with it if if, if you. If you were to take a look at the city of Martin, it's a very clean city. But they do a great job, but they're so undermanned, and, and, and they're in the process of adding on a building to be able to compensate for all that, uh, uh, for all the work that is needed to be done throughout the city. So, three seventy-five to four fifty. I'll be the stupid one in the room. Where's the decimal place? About uh, four hundred fifty dollars per year. I assume. And is there is it a different level for residential versus commercial? Yes, uh, and I, yeah, and I don't know what the commercial rate is. Okay. Though. Well, I can tell you this. I, I know I'm, I'm the president of our homeowners association where I live, and our dues, I think we have doubled in the last five years, just about. It's uh, the price of everything has become so much more expensive, and uh, it, it's unfortunate, but there's no choice. Yeah, you, you know, our dump, raise prices. Our, yeah, our dumping fees are, have probably have almost doubled. So, I mean, there's, uh, there's all kinds of tangibles that go into making a, a hard decision like that. Believe me, I, you know what? I'm a citizen of Martinsburg, and I pay those fees too. Uh, do I like having my fees raised? No, but uh, those are necessities that, that need to be taken care of to make sure that we have a nice, clean, and vibrant city. Are the trash workers city employees? They or? are. Okay. They are. So the legislature recently, in dealing with jail bills across the state, has come up with some changes, and those changes – it appears will indicate that the city will now have to start paying a bit more for people at the ERJ that they had paid in the past. Well, I don't know if that's a, a little bit more, but we, you know, we do have a budget for mm -hmm. uh, jail fees in our budget, so I, 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 we're well aware of that, and it's not something that we haven't been doing along along the way. So, have you, have you projected any additional costs as a real, I, result I, of the legislative I changes? I have not. Do you anticipate any? I, I would imagine that uh, come budget time, it's something that we would take a look at to make sure that uh, we have enough in our budget to be able to handle those fees if when, we have to move things around. When is budget time for you? Uh, we'll start. Well, our, our our city budget started July first, so the mm -hmm. new fiscal year started July first, and we'll start working on our budget sometimes uh, in January, and have it finished by March. Have your revenues gone up, Kevin, in the last couple of years significantly? Well, I, I don't know about significantly, but uh, yes, our revenues go up. I mean, look at all the, the, the work that's being done within the city limits and, uh, you know, the hotel and the motel tax is, uh, is a big help because those they're, we're building hotels all the time, so there's, mm -hmm. always, uh, there's always more people coming to the area. Uh, you have a lot of work going on, so is it, is it something that's going to be year in, year out? Uh, I don't think so because, you know, uh, as – jobs get done you know you have a big job coming up at up at the uh, interwoven mills you have the city hall project going on you have a hotel a couple of hotels being built you have uh housings being built you have all these other different things that are that are coming to the city that uh are, you know there's only gonna be a certain point where that's going to start coming down rather than going up 
So with the development of things like the interwoven uh, facility to, for high-end apartments, right? it seems to me there's a chicken and egg thing here that, that those are going to be a lot of apartments and it's going to be a fairly high rate, as I understand, or a nice, you know, 1500s is what been quoted. So where do those people come from and what do they do? Are we looking initially for that to be primarily commuters? Well, uh, you know, uh, I, I would imagine that from all the conversations I had, it's very important that we keep this Mark train going uh, into, into Martinsburg. That was always been a contention so far we've been able to hold on to that uh, and yes they would be marketing to young professionals uh, in that that area the uh, anywhere from the, the Frederick on area to be able to um, move here and enjoy the the amenities that we're going to be offering here that we are currently offer here in the city how tenuous is the relationship with the train well, you know what? That's uh, year in year out. We, you know, uh, we have to fight about it because uh, the, the state doesn't believe that uh, we need that they need to fund the train. But uh, I, all I ask is, give me seven years, and after seven years, if you feel the same way after the growth that we've seen here in the city and everything else, uh, uh, then maybe that's something you might want to address at that point. How much does the city put into the provision of the train service? We 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 don't put anything in. And uh, I we, think that's the same with the county. If right, you and and that's the same with any municipality along yeah. that path, like Harpers Ferry, and none of them. Now there was that one time that we we did that everybody put in it yeah. when it was uh, push came to shove, but. Right now, that's not that's not on anybody's radar, and hopefully, after this conversation, it doesn't it doesn't throw it throw it back but, up on their radar. But then that throws it back to the state, and the state makes the argument uh, that the bulk of the populace, the state, do not benefit from the the trains, only a small section. Why should the state put in several million dollars? Well, and I, I understand that, uh, but keep in mind that we are the economic driving force of the state. That that you know we're the fastest growing area in the state of West Virginia and, and it, it makes perfect sense to invest in into something like that. They want to bring they want they want our youth to stay here locally and this is an opportunity for them to stay stay in the state of West Virginia and also work elsewhere. Well, and that'll trigger a more development just the interwoven in itself triggers more development in terms of restaurants mm -hmm. and, and things to do and the but that's why it's sort of chicken and egg. You know, it's right. I would think at this point, everything is a very delicate balance. Well, and you know, you have the garage that's going to be opening up here, right, two blocks away from that. And that's a. When is that open, Kevin? I don't have the. I don't know the exact date, but they, you know, they they keep moving forward, and I would imagine that you would see that sometime, hopefully, the, this part of the year, you're going to see the interwoven hire. They're going to start putting together a um, uh, a real uh, a rental team. They're going to. I just toured there about two, three weeks ago, and stiff. Some of those units are almost done, and they're going to hopefully be starting to rent some of those out in uh, springtime of next year. So, I mean, exciting stuff happening here in the city of Martinsburg, and it's great to be able to work with the city council and, and staff to be able to make all that stuff come to. Let me go back to the train for just a second. You said give give you seven years. Uh, after seven years, what does that mean? Well, the reason why I say seven years, Bill, is uh, you know, or or an X number. Yeah, of years, whatever, you know. whatever the number is, is is uh, you know I, I believe that when they did the study as far as how many people commuters used the train, it was uh, you know it was during COVID and and nobody was going anywhere and and there was little use at that time and and I think what you're going to see here in the next five to uh, seven years is uh, especially the influx of 385 apartments that are going to be market value is that our hopes is you're going to see the 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 use of that train being used more by more people more often uh than than you you currently see it and but the and train has never really been uh paid for by the passengers it's always been supplemented by some some force and it has been maryland in years past uh and comes back to west virginia paying their share uh and i can see the reluctance of the uh of the state continuing paying i am troubled under not understanding why the city and the counties do not uh, make a contribution well i i mean that I, I don't know why to be quite yeah, honest i yeah. mean that's something that uh that's always been set that way, and uh, you know, uh, states always trying to take things away from the city. So I mean, I, that's probably that's probably why that uh, that's probably not why that's happening. How goes the search for Mr. Baldwin's replacement, Kevin? 
Well, on our, uh, we will be having a meeting on September, I believe it's the 14th of this, of, of September. And at that point, we will have a, uh, a new city manager that will be on that agenda that the city, the city uh, council will vote on. I don't see anything happening that wouldn't change that. And, uh, you know, we went through the process and it was uh, unanimous with the, with the city of Martinsburg as to who would be the, the heir apparent. And, uh, and Have you hired from within or gone outside? Uh, we hired within. Did chain farthing apply? You know what? I, as far as the applicants, I don't want to you know, divulge who, who applied and who didn't apply. And uh, you know, we do have we do have a, we had a candidate that uh, that we feel is going to be uh, the best fit for the city moving forward, uh, taking over from Mark that has uh, done a wonderful job in the last 27 years in the city of Martinsburg. And when will that person assume their first day on the job? I, I believe it's like the 28th or something of October. Mark, Mark's last day, he'll, he'll jump right in. Will Mark stay on at all in a consulting uh, form? That, or is he done? He's done. Uh, that has not been discussed. I think Mark is uh, going to take a little bit of time for himself to see what, what direction he may or may not want to go. Uh, keep in mind, his, his wife has retired, and he has now a grandson that... Uh, that lives in North Carolina, so I, I would imagine that he would take some time to evaluate what he wants to do moving forward, and and his new replacement is you know, uh, it's it's not gonna, it's not you know I I don't think it's a secret. Andy Blake is going to be our new, uh, is, is who's going to be put up in front of a uh, city council. So, uh, you know, it was a unanimous at that point. It's just to make it official as far as uh, uh, what uh, what the city has to vote on. So Andy, if, if he gets the votes, will be the new city manager. Yeah, yeah, and I, again, that was I, I don't see that being a problem. David Anderson, after saying you're a great mayor, by the way, uh, asks uh, any progress about a West Side fire station. Well, you know what, uh, David, I got to tell you that's uh, the, the fire department is very dear and near to my heart, and I always keep an eye out, an extra eye out for those guys and and the police department that. We're doing everything we can that, you know, for one, we have to identify property. And, and that's going to have to be uh, done sooner rather than later because property is kind of a disappearing around here. So uh, I think you will see in the next, you know, at least with the next administration, whether that be myself and the current city council, that uh, the land will be purchased and, and, and move forward. That would be the hopes of, of me at this point in, in time. Would Hedgesville ever respond to a call in the in Martinsburg itself? Well, I, I, I believe that uh, I know that they all work together. So mm -hmm. the answer would be yes if needed. Uh, I know that you have some of the county ones that sit right around the city limits. We yeah. have the one over by uh, the old Kmart that, uh, that, that they respond. One thing about the, the fire departments here locally, whether it be county or municipality, is they, they work very, very close together. And, uh, you know, when, when one gets called, they all get called. And, and I, I, I admire the, the men and women that, that are within, within the fire department. They, sometimes they get a bad rap as far as not, you know, not working all the time. But, you know, when, when the fire goes, they're going through that door and they're saving lives. And as far as I'm concerned, is they're, you know, they're, they're number one in my book. Any updates on... Uh any of the paths or anything uh, involving Lambert? Well, yes. Uh, uh, the update on Lambert would be as we we had a, a meeting with the uh, CEC, which is our uh, contracted engineering firm, to put a scope of work together uh, to look at all the options possible as to what we can do at Lambert. So, you know, is it a splash pad? Is it a splash pad with a pool? Is it a splash a splash pad? Splash you path. Want, Bill, help him out here. I will. Splash <laughs> path. Move to the side, Kevin. I'll or, take or, over. Or just, a, or, or, or just a pool, indoor, outdoor. We're looking at every uh, aspect of what what if, what can we do, and and also looking at what, what if anything can be done with the current pool. Is it something that's fixable? You know, Are we going to be able to get in there and fix it? We don't know. But it is our goal. Uh, the city of Martinsburg, the city council, administration, myself, to make sure that we have some kind of recreational 
uh, opportunities for uh, the summer for the people on the north side of town, and, and it's very, very important. And, and this scope of work will give us an idea whether it's going to be one million, ten million, and then then we have to make decisions financially of what we can afford, whether it becomes a, a bond issue or whatever, to be able to make those things come to fruition. Is that something that would be entirely the fiscal responsibility of the city of Martinsburg? Not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the Parks and Rec is uh, is funded by city and county, and and uh, you know, those those conversations at that point would. Uh, would have to take place, but I can tell you that uh, in my in my book, uh, we're going to do our whatever we can to make sure that something's going to happen over there. It's, gonna, it, it's not going to be ready for next year unless it's a repair or use of what's current there, if that's the best option. But uh, but we will have something over there one in one way or another. Kevin, I can understand the pool, but I'm also hearing some of the uh, uh, other events have been moved to other sections of the county, such as basketball is moving to the Randy Smith uh, in Inwood. Um, is, if that's true, why? What? Uh, why has that been done? You know what? I don't. I don't know the the day to day operations of, of Parks and Rec. I don't get involved with the uh, Bob Williams and and his his staff and and that board. Uh, they make their decisions, uh, and you know. I could not answer that. I mean, and I, I may be wrong. I've just yeah, heard this might, from one person. Well, so no, I, I mean, wrong. it's you, you're. Yeah. I've heard that too. Yeah. That uh, I don't know if it's all being moved out of there, but uh, uh, you know, that's the word that's going on. And you know, if you, I would suggest um, somebody from Parks and Rec coming on and, and asking those questions to be able to to move things forward a little bit uh, clearer. I mean, it's uh, it's clear that there's. Uh, a lot of talk going on, and, and you know, we as a city, uh, have, we're, we're not responsible for what happens with Parks and Rec, but we are we are owners of the pro some of the properties that uh, that the parks sit on. But keep in mind there's a lot more properties that the parks sit on that are in the county than they are in the city. Uh, go ahead, John. No, I was just going to – it felt like we were winding up. I just want to say that I, the, the air show was 100% – success it was a great time we were there on saturday for the whole day got there like 10 o'clock got front row seats and it was a spectacular excellently run i'm not sure that's a word run show so congratulations on that any idea how many people came well you know what i i, I can't take any credit from that at all that was nick deal mm -hmm. nick deal is the guy that put that together and and uh, i had virtually all, nothing in, involved in in, in the, the the air show and except for my wife volunteering the last two days. And so actually, I, I want to commend Berkeley County EMS. My wife had an episode uh, in while, while um, volunteering that um, required some EMS uh, support, and uh, they were right on the spot. And uh, I want to thank you very much openly that the work that you all do at, at the EMS for the county is well, well known, and, uh, and you get total respect for me. Thank you for being there for my wife. Hope Dana's okay. Yeah, she is. It was a, uh, you know, she uh, she didn't. Uh, uh, she was dehydrated and uh, her, her muscles started to contract. And mm -hmm. and once they they got got a hold of her real quick, real fast, they uh, she was able to stay there and she continued to work. But God love her. Kevin, final minute. Anything that we didn't cover, you need to make sure people know about. Well, just you know, make sure that uh, you you get to visit our, our new trail, our, our Fog Hollow Trail, and you're going to see some things happening down there. There's going to be a a, a, mo a memorial place that we're putting together for elected officials that passed away in in, uh, in office. So uh, that's going to be coming soon to be able to to come down and and, and you know at least uh, view a, 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 a nice place, nice quiet place for people to have some some thought and some prayer. Good to see you again. Good to be here. Mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knoll.